What's up guys, in this video we're going to explain how the food, industry, dust, science output of a planet affects the output of your whole system and some of the math around it, as well as how your population units affect these output values. We're going to get pretty math heavy if you like that and you really want to tweak and optimize your gameplay. Stick around to the end of the video and we'll really start digging into the details of how Endless Space 2 works. So first of all, when you look at the solar system view, any planet that you haven't colonized, the FIDS output is represented by these bars. This is true in a system you haven't colonized at all. It's also true in a system you've colonized, but planets that you haven't. So planets that I've already colonized show my actual output. Planets that I do not have settled still just show these bars. However, mousing over the planet itself in this screen, down in the lower left actually gives you the numerical values of the output. And you see here 12 production and 5 gold and 1 science. So each of these ticks don't correspond to any particular number. It's not like one tick is always 2 production or 2 gold. So you see here I've got 5 gold even though I have 2 ticks. I've got 1 science. So you can even see that this isn't directly twice as much gold as science. Excuse me, dust. I've got five gold and one science. So these ticks are a little bit useless to me. Always try to get the actual numerical values. In this system view, you can do, see it by mousing over the planet itself. And in this view, you see it by mousing over the planet or the planet's name. Which is interesting because in an unsettled system, oh, I'm sure if I wasn't the Lumeris and it didn't have this colonizing tooltip, it would show it here but you can also mouse over the planet name up here to see the actual output. So you see 16 production, two dust. So what do these numbers actually mean? The FIDS output, the planet base output, so here, let, let's look at the food and production as an example on, on Zinnius 1 here. So we've got two food and eight production base. These base numbers are always multiplied by the number of population units on the planet. So you see I have four population units here. Basically, each population unit achieves the two food, eight production, four gold. So it multiplies the base population output by the number of population units. And you can see that's true here. We have two base food times four population units gives eight food. You also have eight base production times four population units gives you 32 production. Let's look at a more complicated example. So the total planet is putting out 82 food. So the planet base output is seven food per population unit. Now I have seven population units here. Seven times seven is only 49. For some reason I'm getting 82. So let's dig into this a little bit more. We're seeing I'm getting 70 from each population. So that's implying it's 10 per person, plus 12 more for each of my Lumeris citizens. So that's four more for Lumeris. So let's figure out what these are. Basically your base planet output is further modified by some improvements which impact each planet in your system. So let's find them. Denark University gives me plus two of all FIDs, food, industry, dust, science, per person. So that takes it from seven base up to nine. I also have the blue cap mold, which gives me one more per person. So that goes from the seven base up to 10. So that explains the plus 70 from my population. Now also I'm getting 12 from Lumeris. That's three for each of these four. And that is because I have intensive cultivation plus three food on original empire population, which means it's just my Lumeris population units. So as you can see, for a given planet, your output, and this is true for not only food, but for production, dust, science, etc. Your output is your planet base output modified by things like buildings and resource deposits times the number of population units. That all rolls up into your planet output. Now that in itself rolls into your system food here, which the first line item is the food from the planet. So 290 is 82 plus 111 plus 97. So I get all the food from my planet. I also get 75 from intensive cultivation. So that's actually another system improvement, which is the plus 25 per system level. So I'm level three, so it gives me 75. 48 because I'm happy, 40 base, 40 from sustainable farms. Sustainable farms is another thing I've built here, which gives me 10 per planet, five per cold. 
it's giving me a total of 40. So I think it's giving me 10 for this one, 10 for this one, 10 for this one, five for this and five for this. So it's not giving me any benefit from this uncolonized plant. Passing trade route is adding food. Drone networks, which is another system improvement is adding food. Now I'm losing some food to replenish my empire's manpower. And I'm losing some food simply from the consumption that my population units are eating. You can see here that my empire manpower is not maxed out yet. This is the base increase of my manpower. So that's where that food's going. It's going to replenish my empire manpower. So finally, when you take all the food coming in, all the food going out, I have 126 food left over. That food is what goes to increasing your population. Now this system's currently maxed out, so let's look at a better example. Here we've got 23 food after you take all the inputs minus all the outputs. And you can see here system population growth. So my current stock of food, this kind of invisible stockpile of food behind the scenes, is 182. System growth is 23. That's the same number right here. So if I get 23 food per turn added to my stockpile, it will take six turns to get me to the next population unit. Right now I'm at 182 and I need 300. So if you take 23 times six, it'll, it'll finally get me over that 300 threshold, add a new population unit. All right, so now let's look at percentage multipliers. So you see here, if I hover over my happiness, the effect is it gives me plus 10% food on my system. It's, it's a little unclear what value this percentage applies to. What we see here is we're getting plus 48 food from being happy. If that is 10% of some base value, it would be 480. So what, what is this 480 food that they're modifying by plus 10%? Well, if you add up 290 from the planet, 75 from intensive cultivation, 40 from the colony base, 40 from sustainable farms, and 29.8 from passing trade routes, and 5 from drone networks, you'll actually get 480. So that percent modifier applies after all these other modifiers, all the buildings, all of the passing trade routes and everything. On top of that, it adds the percentage modifier before subtracting the consumption. So that's something interesting to note. It may affect what things you build, um, but it's not quite clear unless you really dig into the numbers. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about population management. So here we go, we've got my capital system, which is giving plus 200 food total. However, we're currently maxed out on population right now. Let's assume I couldn't colonize this planet. All this surplus food, I believe, is currently going to waste because, as you can see here, we're not generating any new population because they have nowhere to go. S however, I've got another system, Eda, which has plenty of space left for population to grow, and they only have 94 food, so it's taking them, you know, a good bit of turn time, you know, uh, looks like at least three to four turns for each new population to appear. So, once you have your system upgraded to level two or more, you get a spaceport and you can transfer population to another system. So I'm gonna send these guys to Ita. And now you'll see all this food that I had. Now it's gonna replenish the population on this system very quickly. So this is a way to optimize your food. If you have a lot of population on your high food systems, which will tend to be true, ship those population to the other systems with lower food, which can't generate their own population as easily. This will help your whole empire grow much faster. And finally, I believe the game always optimizes the placement of your population units. So here we go, these Eider guys, um, they get plus five gold, five, plus five dust on a gas planet. So the game, of course, is gonna make sure that there's an Eider population unit on my gas planet in the system and it will always behind the scenes be doing this balancing thing unless you intentionally change the automation focus to maximize food or industry or dust but the default position the game will will optimize the total output i think it assumes food and production and dust and science are all equal by shifting your population around for you in whatever um, manner is going to result in the maximum output However, you can always shift these around individually. I can drop him there. Now these guys are back here. And you can see our dust went down to 65 when previously it was 
74. So we want this Eider guy on this gas planet. And finally, don't forget about your population details. You get these by going from the political screen to the population census. Don't forget, you can see a summary of your population effects, the effects of each individual unit here. So, for example, I might want to ship, using the spaceport, ship all my Eider to systems that have gas planets. Having these guys sitting on non-gas planets is not very effective. Um, so if you really want to get into optimization, find all your Eider, make sure they're on gas planets. In this case, I've only got one sitting on a gas planet, and these three are basically wasted. So I want to take these guys, ship them off somewhere where I know I have a gas planet. And finally, let's look at the collection bonuses. So the Lumeris, once I have at least 20 of them in my empire, they give me plus 15% dust on systems with a Lumeris population. So first thing to think, it sounds to me like I should definitely make sure I have at least one Lumeris on every system. As long as I have at least one, it gives me that whole 15% bonus. So that's actually really interesting. But let's see how this applies itself. So if we look at this system, we see I'm getting 8.7 dust from population types on system. So that is that bonus from my Lumeris collection bonus. 8.7 is exactly 15% of 58. So this modifier is modifying, apparently, the base dust from the planets. You'll also notice that I have another 15% bonus, the 8.7 from FID's percentage bonus. That, I believe, is because of this law, plus 15% FID's per empire is at peace. So I'm basically at peace with one empire. So you'll note that these percentages don't stack. They basically both apply to some base value. But I'm curious about this base value. Let's look at another system. So this one's really interesting. I'm getting 30.1 for this 15% bonus, but 30.1 is 15% of 200. So what is this base 200 that it's taking 15% of? It's the 146 plus person of means plus hero starting skills plus cerebral reality is 201. This 80.4 from my precious precept is not being modified by this percentage bonus. Oh, that's because my precious precept is itself another percentage modifier. So I think there's all the base um, straight numerical dust output values all those are added together and then any percentage modifiers all apply to that base value but don't apply to each other all right so here's a real complicated one so we're getting 53.3 which is 15 percent of 355 so if you take the 123 from the planet plus 114 from galactic supermarket plus 53 from analytical engine plus 30 from mayo's family favor 25 galactic hq 10 from cerebral reality you get exactly 355 so the bonus from my precious precept isn't modified the bonus from black tax authority isn't modified which is probably also a percentage yep so hopefully this deep dive into planetary output of fids food industry dust and science as well as some t some discussion of population management is really helpful to start optimizing and tweaking your gameplay, especially if you're playing on harder difficulties or you really want to get that extra edge in a multiplayer game. Subscribe and give this video a like if the content's great and it will encourage me to continue to put out more Endless Space 2 content like this.